Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. In my last report on SolidWorks 2012, now in pre-release code, I showed you SolidWorks costing, one of the major features appearing in the first time in this release. In this one, we'll take a look at a few more features. The first thing I want to share with you is the exploded views of multi-body parts. It's pretty straightforward to explode an assembly, since an assembly has its own internal components. In SOLIDWORKS, several releases ago, the developers introduced the option to create single parts that have multiple solid bodies. You can create a multi-body part by unchecking the merge results when you're extruding a sketch profile that is resting on a surface of your part. Effectively, you are creating a new separate solid body within the same part. To explode the multi-body part, you choose Insert, Exploded View. Then you get the window that lets you drag your solid bodies in different directions along X, Y, or Z axis. That's essentially how you would create an exploded view of a single part to show how separate pieces of solids are making up its entirety as a whole. There is another advantage to these multi-body parts, as I found out. You can apply different materials and colors to each solid body. So if you have a situation where a single solid part is to be painted differently in different sections, you can perhaps visualize it the same way. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about magnetic attraction. All right, I'm talking about the magnetic line function. This is a nice trick to help you organize misaligned balloons in your production drawings. So what you do is draw a magnetic line along an area where you would like the balloons to be aligned. This line is where the balloons have a tendency to snap to. Then you just drag your balloons close to the line and once they are nearby, the balloons will attach themselves to the magnetic line. Sort of like pieces of magnets will get attracted to the line. If you normally work with complex parts with a lengthy feature history, you might like the new tool called Feature Freeze Line. You'll have to first enable it by going to the Application Option dialog box. Then you place a check mark next to the Enabling Feature Freeze option. With this option turned on, you now have a bar that you can drag and place along a logical place in your feature history. What the software does then is if you add or edit more features to your model, it will rebuild the new geometry from the freeze point it won't regenerate the entire piece. Now using this function is a bit tricky, as I found out. You obviously need to think about how your subsequent edits are going to affect your existing feature structure. If you are editing your part in a way that affects earlier features, freezing earlier features can give you maybe error messages, or cause your part to reshape itself in a way that is not intended. The other performance improvement trick that comes in version 2012 is the assembly review mode. Instead of opening your assembly as a fully resolved assembly model with all its solid parts loaded into your machine's virtual memory, you can open your assembly in the assembly review mode. Essentially, it is a composite of rough geometric representations of your sub-assemblies that make the rotation, review, and inspection much faster on your machine, of course. But if you plan on editing the assembly and its internal parts, you'll need to open it in the full assembly mode, not just the review mode. SolidWorks 2012 is another release with a host of performance and productivity improvements. The star of the release is SolidWorks costing, introducing the ability to estimate manufacturing cost for sheet metal and machine parts based on material choices, mass, stock unit price, and production methods. This review is based on a pre-release code, so keep in mind that there may be minor changes and tweaks to the features and functions discussed here when the software finally hit the shelf. Till next time, this is Kenneth Wong for Desktop Engineering Magazine.